Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, pleased to be handicapping this year's Grade 1 Dubai World Cup with Gino Bacola. Gino, as we take a look at this field, 12 horses, $12 million, lots of storylines. This is a fantastic field lineup. We have a really strong contingent sent from North America and then some of the best horses in the world right now. Last year's winner, Ushba Tesoro, who we saw in the Breeders' Cup. So not only is it a strong race, but I think it's a race that a lot of people in the U.S., uh, us U.S. betters, are going to be familiar with a lot of these names, Dan. Most notably, perhaps Senor Buscador, who recently won the Saudi Cup, just denying Ushba Tesoro on the line. Now, that race was a mile and an eighth one turn. It's a completely different ball game. At a mile and a quarter, two turns, does Ushba Tesoro have an edge over Senor Buscador? I think so uh, in this particular layout. Senor Buscador is one of those deep kind of stone cold closers. And in my opinion, he's a little bit more pace dependent and dependent on the race shape than a horse like Ushba Tesoro, who I think he still can close into slower fractions or uh, a different type of race shape that we've seen him do before. He was the one that actually moved early in the Saudi Cup, and then Senor Buscador was able to kind of wear him down. My concern with Ushba Tesoro has been more recently some slow starts that he's had that have kind of left him a little bit too much to do late. So if he can get out of the gate uh, just fine and smooth, I think he will be really tough to hold off. Let's throw up our time form U.S. pace projector. The Saudi Cup looked like the pace was very, very fast. And here, of course, we're not going to have pace data for all of the runners. Many of them have foreign running lines. It doesn't appear, though, that the pace is going to be so hot. Laurel River stretching out in distance has speed, Gino. And from this outside post position, it looks like he's got to go. I wonder if Derma Sotogake is going to try to perhaps repeat the tactics that worked well for him in last year's UAE Derby by going to the lead. Yeah, and there's another wild card too. A horse that I've always thought had a little bit more speed than he showed recently is a horse who I think you like a little, Dan Newgate, Ooh. who's been running out here in Southern California. I was kind of expecting him to be more forwardly placed in his last couple starts. He's come from off the pace, but I would not be shocked with Tory. I've seen him be very, very aggressive with horses that he's been aboard before um, out here in SoCal. So I wouldn't be shocked to see Newgate get a decent trip not too far out of it. Breaking from the inside post is the number two, Kruppi. And when you watched Kruppi early on as a two-year-old, when I got a chance to see him in New York and he was burning some money, you always had the feeling this was a big guy that just needed to grow up and mature. And as he got older and as he got more distance, he would find his way. And that's been the case for Kruppi. He won a couple of stakes races in his uh, two, final two starts of 2023. And then he showed he could hang with the big boys. He came with a big run in the Pegasus World Cup, although I thought that track was speed favoring. So maybe he was against sort of the way the racetrack was playing. I was pretty impressed with his effort last time out in the Pegasus World Cup. Uh, he was 35 to 1 that day. He finished third. It was a good effort. Now, I think he will need to take another step up in order to contend with these because this does seem like it is much tougher than that uh, Pegasus World Cup was that day. And the race shape, uh, the mile and a quarter, some things that might be a little bit different for him. So while I have no knocks on what he's done so far, I do think he's going to need to step up and show us a little bit better than what we've seen from him in order to compete and, and maybe hit the board here. Although he began his career in Kazakhstan and Russia of all places, there's a chance that the number six, post position two, Kabra Khan, has the home court advantage on Saturday. Let's watch his most recent race. This is the Group 1 Al Maktoum Challenge, and Kabir Khan is very comfortable turning into the stretch, and he gets away from these horses nicely in the lane. Distance isn't a problem, and from watching his races in Dubai, it looks like he's got that tactical speed to work out his own trip. I like him in here, Dan. I think he's super versatile. This is one of the most interesting rabbit hole deep dives I've been on in horse racing in a while. I watched the video that was put together where you can see just the end of one of his debut races where he's winning a race where there's no outer rail. It looks like it's a track in the middle of the woods. There's three horses and they're running uh, all over puddles throughout. But you can still see in those races that this horse has some ability. And then they step him up. He goes from Kazakhstan to Russia. Dan, I was going to let you do the Borat impersonation, so I'll save that one for you this time. Uh, and then we saw him just dominate Russia all throughout. After that, they wanted to give him a real acid test and see if he can step up and, and you know play with the big boys in Dubai and Maidan. And those two races there have been so impressive. When I watch him run... I don't even know if we've seen close to the best from him or if they've scratched the surface on him. He 
he almost looks like he's going in slow motion because he's moving so easily. And he, and then you watch the horses that are next to him and they're kind of struggling to keep up with him as he goes by. I had a fascinating time. I called my dad, talk, told him about this horse. I was so excited. So dad, you got to look at this. This one is strange. A horse who was running in a three horse race and is going to be one of the top choices for $12 million in the Dubai world cup. And all this for a son of Kentucky Derby winner, California Chrome. It just completes the story. His uh, dam that- too, Dan, just to get a little tangent. His dam was a horse named Little Emily. She won a race at Fairplex. And it was t- top five best days of my entire life in, in horse racing. I was waiting for her to run back. She was 22 to one. So California Chrome on top. You've got a, a dam that won a race at Fairplex. A horse that debuted in Kazakhstan and is going to be running in Dubai. Talk about some uh, world connections for this one. A horse that's been racing as far away from Fairplex as possible is up next, and that's the number five, Dura Arede, who invades from Japan, and we have seen Japanese horses do extremely well on the international scene. It just seems like everywhere in recent years. Now, he recently ran a mile in the February stakes, and he actually showed some pretty good speed in that race. He was taken in hand. He raced in between horses. I'm not sure it was the most comfortable trip for him, but at least it showed that he has that sort of speed. My one concern is, of the Japanese horses in this race. I'm not sure he's the strongest one. And wasn't he supposed to make hay in the February with the big boys out of town running in Saudi? That race was dominated by long shots. Absolutely. He was only nine to two that day too. So I think the betting told you that he was a major player there. And I completely agree with you in looking at the the Japanese contingent in here. I wouldn't be shocked to see uh, maybe Dura Rede uh, flash some early pace and then finish underneath and maybe a strong showing with a, a minor award. But I would be a little bit surprised if this one was able to turn the tables on uh, Ushba Tesoro or Durma Sotogake, who have just seen that like they are a, a little bit of a, a step above him when they faced up in Japan and in other spots. So to me, he's more of an undertype. Up next in the gates, the number eight, Military Law. And he's always been a hard knocker running in Dubai and in Saudi Arabia. He was sixth in the 2021 edition of the Saudi Cup. Coming into that race in good form, he's coming into the Dubai World Cup in good form. Here's his win in a group two. He beat Clapton, who finished third in this race. And Military Law just looked very, very comfortable turning into the stretch. He did what he had to do. You just get the feeling against this group of forces, he's going to have to do a little bit better. Yeah, he, what I like is that he was challenged here, and and then he actually kind of repelled the challenge and kept going. I don't think he was ever going to get past in this particular spot. So he's a tough horse on the front end to get by, or he's a tough horse to pass late because he has all that fitness. He has a really nice body of work, but I completely agree with you, Dan. I think this year, this race came up really, really tough, and the top four or five in here just seem to me like they are sure to have been in really nice form and i think military law just looking at his last three races he really was no match for cobra con uh when they faced two starts back his other two races have been solid i think that just shows you from a class level he might be just a little bit below some of the top tier in here up next is the 11 ushba tesoro he's one of the horses to beat in this race without a doubt you mentioned that he can be a little bit temperamental sometimes he doesn't get out of the gate and if that happens he could be a little bit at the mercy of pace and race luck but after his breeders cup classic just a race where it was kind of dominated on the front end for the most part white barrio got up close and just made a move ushba tesoro was running on at the end he's run very well uh, a win in Japan, a good second in the Saudi Cup. You mentioned he might have moved a little bit too early in the Saudi Cup at a distance that's a little bit short for him, but this is his wheelhouse, a mile and a quarter around two turns. And you kind of watch the two horses that were finishing in the Saudi Cup where you see Ushba Tesoro and you see um, Senor Buscador. And just there, you could tell how much more Senor Buscador is kind of that one-turn late-running horse who wants to fly by you and how much more Ushba Tesoro is more of that grinder who I think can really get the distance and can maybe adapt to different type of pace scenarios. That's why it may be a little bit more cold on Senor Buscador in this particular spot because I think some of the other top contenders are just a little more tactical than them than him. And I think they will have the opportunity to kind of make their own trip more than a Senor Buscador. That is the case, I think, for Ushbo Tesoro. You look at his form overall with the Breeders' Cup and then you know about six weeks off to the race in Japan where he came back and won it for the second year in a row. And then he comes back with that good second in the Saudi Cup. Even though he was a runner-up that day, it was still a great effort. He should be primed and ready and fit for this one. And all this travel doesn't bother him at all. He's a very hardy horse. We'll find out how the number nine Newgate deals with traveling halfway across the world. Well, it's Bob Baffert. He's had so much success in this race in the past. Of course, with Frankie Dettori and Country Grammar most recently. Newgate is here. 
Coming off a victory in one of the races we hold near and dear to our hearts, it's the Grade 1 Santa Anita Handicap. The Big Cap is one of the historic races in American racing, and maybe in recent years, because of races like the Pegasus and the Saudi Cup and the Dubai World Cup, it hasn't gotten the strongest fields. But Newgate was kind of game here, just grinding it out. The last quarter mile was run in sort of trotting horse time, but he was game to do it going a mile and a quarter, and I think he can get closer to the pace if necessary. We ran on a horse named Subsanador who was loose on the lead that day, and he looked like he was gone. And Subsanador, while he was disappointing in his first start in North America, he was a horse who had a lot of buzz coming over when he debuted at the end of 2023. So I think that is still a very nice horse that he was able to get by there. And I don't really have many knocks on Newgate in here. Honestly, Dan, for me, when I was going through my selections towards the back end of the, the third and fourth horses, it was either going to be kind of Newgate and Ushba Tesoro. And if I were playing pick fours and pick fives and stuff, Newgate would be a horse I would absolutely throw in because of the trip. And I know that you like him a little bit. What are the, What's the kind of trip that you are hoping for with a horse like Newgate? Personally, I think there's a chance with some of the horses in here stretching out in distance that this pace could be solid. I'd like Frankie maybe to settle in mid-pack. I'm not saying he's going to be a one-run closer, but I think if he can work out his trip in the Santa Anita handicap, if the pace is hot, I think he can get him to the outside, and we'll see if he can grind these horses down. The key for Newgate is to get the jump on the true closer. Mm -hmm. Horses like Senor Buscador, maybe if Ushba Tesoro misses the break, he'll get the jump on him, and then we'll see if he can gut it out. Out. He has to improve, but he's so lightly raced that maybe we've yet to see his best. And of course, it's a sign of confidence that Baffert is here with Newgate. Clapton is up next, going out for Chad Summers, who has had success in Dubai in the past. He won the Golden Shaheen twice with Mind Your Biscuits. We saw Clapton, however, in Dubai already twice prepping for the World Cup. He's been beaten by a couple of these horses, so he's going to have to do a little bit better. Yeah, I just I couldn't find any excuse or any real reason why he was going to be able to turn the tables on the horses who handled him pretty easily in their most recent races, Military Law and Cobracon. So uh, we remember Clapton from out here in the, the U.S. who ran some good races here, but he really will need to step up to be uh, competitive with this group. And you can see he's 50 to 1 on the morning line. Maybe just repeating the pattern is going to get it done for the four. Derma Sotogake. Remember last year he ran quite well in the Saudi Derby, but didn't get the job done. He shows up in the UAE Derby. I thought he took advantage of a rail favoring track that day, but he was very, very good going right to the lead and wiring that field. In his last race, the Saudi Cup, he gave an even performance after some issues with the travel that might have sort of cost him a little bit of conditioning. Now Derma Sotogake, second back from Breeders' Cup Classic, where he ran very well. I'm expecting an improved performance for this guy. He likes Maidan. Yeah, and I think he's really interesting because of the horses we're talking about with their running styles. He does seem to be a little bit versatile. I would not be shocked if he was a horse who could sit tactically, maybe where, where you were talking about hoping for Newgate, and maybe he can get the jump too on some of the horses behind him, like Senior Buscador and Ushba Tesoro. That's pretty much what happened in the Saudi Cup last time out. He was towards the back of the first group. He was 10th, but he really wasn't that far out of it. And he was two from the rail. He kind of maneuvered through traffic. He moved up to third early in the stretch. Now, he was all in that day. Um, he was, you know, not far behind or right around the fourth place finisher, National Treasure. And he was able to kind of move right up into it with him. And then he backed up a little bit behind that. I think this race shapes up well for him. And as you pointed out, just the pattern of races now, I think he'll be very, very fit. So in most exotics that I'm playing in here, he's going to be on them. And I, I'm expecting a really big race from Derma Sotogake. When Bob Baffert had the number three defunded in North America, this horse showed speed. Remember, he wired mm -hmm. him in the Gold Cup at Santa Anita back in May. He's run once for these new connections. It was the Saudi Cup. He showed no interest whatsoever. But that track, we've talked about it. It can be a little bit deep. Some horses don't seem to like it. I wonder if he'll take to Maidan a little bit better. I think that's the angle you're hoping for, though, because that race in the Saudi Cup was somewhat discouraging. Yeah, you know, at least this horse has some speed and that's, I'm, I'm imagining that's got to be the game plan, right? Let's just try to get this horse back into the race because he does have some back class. But to me, he's just such a, an unknown right now moving to this barn and we haven't seen the good race from him. And we really haven't seen a good race from him since last year in September. So um, in a spot like this, where one of the tougher races in the world, where you really want to be coming into this race with everything in your plan working, all of your preparation going well. I'm never a fan of when a horse had maybe a, have to take a step back or had something not go well on their way. For this one, just a total wild card for me with the funded.
Senor Buscador is next, and what a cool horse. He shows up and dances every dance, and it was nice to see him get the big win in the Saudi Cup last time out. And what a ride from Junior Alvarado. This is the kind of trip a closer needs, to save as much ground as possible, and then when it counts, get out into the clear with no traffic. Ushba Tesoro has the jump on him. It looks like it's going to be real tough for Senor Buscador to kick him down, but kick him down he does in the shadow of the wire. And every time I watch this replay back, I can't help but in my head picture the split screen of Alvarado's family right. rooting in the living room, screaming as he gets up there right on the wire. A great ride. And for me, um, I thought that was the perfect race, the perfect spot, the perfect track, the pace scenario, everything for Senior Buscador. I think it may have also helped, Dan, that I needed him for big, big money in the Pegasus World Cup the time before. So as gamblers, we always know how that goes. The yep. horse will come back the next time and get us. And then we're sitting there going, oh, no, with the dunce cap on. But uh, Senior Buscador ran so well. And as you pointed out, he's a horse who I love as a fan of horse racing because he shows up in all the big battles and he's never been uh, uh, deterred by facing tough company. And you can see that he's been overmatched a couple of times in his career, or maybe like in the breeders cup where he'll catch a track. That's just not playing to his running style, but wow, a cool horse to root for. I just don't know if this race is going to shape up as well for him as that mile and an eighth with all that speed, with that stretch run there uh, in the Saudi cup, that to me felt like the perfect spot for him. No, that's a very good point. And again, I think the one turn really does help him. We'll see what he could do at a mile and a quarter. It's it's hard to imagine that he only had that San Diego where he won it in, in the summer leading up to the Saudi mm -hmm. Cup going winless. But as you mentioned, the Breeders' Cup, those tracks in Santa Anita, so hard for a horse with his running style. In the Cigar Mile, he got wired by Hoist the Gold on a day where the track was so speed favoring, and he still was kicking on for second. And you mentioned the Pegasus where he was running on at the end. Gulfstream, kind of like Santa Anita, though, in that matter where the the track was speed friendly. Senor Buscador is in very good form. It's easy to root for these connections. Wilson Tesoro is up next. Another horse from Japan and similar to Era Durede from the February stakes, a horse that took a lot of money and a horse that just didn't really do much. He did show some speed. If you want to say he was wide around the turn, fine. I expected a lot more though. It's interesting that they're going to stretch him out. Maybe he'll be more effective at this distance. I think he can add to the pace. Yeah, I think at, at least an early pace player, I would be fine using him in underneath spots as well. And I completely agree with you, Dan. Coming off that uh, Dai Shoten runner-up effort where he was very good that day, he set the pace and he was, he. Uh, there were spots where it looked like Ushba Tesoro was not going to get there. I was expecting a much better effort from him last time out. And that was just really disappointing for me. I would not... I have no problem using him in the bottom of a multiple exotics or if you want to play uh, anything in this race, but I think he's going to really need to improve to compete with the top few. And last but certainly not least is the number seven Laurel River. In the summer of 2022, Bob Baffert had this horse primed. He won the Pat O'Brien. He was prepping for the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He was nine to two on the morning line, and he had to scratch the day before the race. And then Laurel River disappears, and he returns of all places in Dubai. He got a sprint prep, and he looks good in this group three, going a mile last time out where Laurel River is by himself turning into the stretch. Now, this is the old Laurel River. The problem is, is this is also a mile, and while he's bred to get a mile and a quarter, it's a tough stamina test. He is such a wild card in this race, but he is like a real, real X factor. Can I give you more just like random uh, gener generalized puns here? Dan, cool. Laurel River is a horse who made an early move and he just dusted this field. And I have no problem with the poor performance on January 26th. Remember folks, that was a year and a half off yes. that he had. So he definitely needed to shake some of the rust off and just get a run around the track to get some of that fitness level back. He is a horse that I think you have to use if you're playing this race in multi exotics, if you're, you know, wanting to close this thing out, cause this is the final uh, race on the card. There are just versions of this race to me where he sits close or he runs away and hides. Cause I don't know anyone else in here who is 100% sure on getting to the lead. And he might just have the most reason to want to go to the front with what it showed him last time out. I can't imagine the connections want to have him sitting next to a horse like Ushba Tesoro and trying to close with them take advantage of what he has speed and he has that advantage over this field. So I think he's going to take them as far as he can go. Uh, does he want to go a mile and a quarter? We will find out, but it's a third start off the long layoff situation. So it's a really good opportunity. And in a race that doesn't seem like there's all that much other early speed to be, you know, battling with him, it's a good place to take a swing 
for the huge, huge money like this. So I think you need to use him at least in some way, shape, or form because he's probably going to be uh, out there front early and he could very well be around late. I expect him to be aggressively ridden just like you from this outside post position. And hey, they could have run him in the Godolphin Mile. That race was tailor-made for him. He just won the local prep. The connections are showing a lot of confidence and he does have that stout Judmont pedigree. Maybe if he can just get a little bit of a breather on the backstretch, he can last this extra distance. Let's take a look at our top picks. It's a sensational race. We can go so many different ways. Kabir Khan, I just can see tucking into a very nice spot off the early leaders. Yeah, that's why I ended up going with Cobber Khan. I, to me, he has a he's a horse that I don't even know if we've scratched the surface on yet. I think there might be more upside with him. And Usma Tesoro, we know his best race can win this. We saw it last year. We know what Senior Buscador can do. I do think there might be a, a little bit of hidden value and talent. And in just watching the uh, the replays and, and listening to the trainer, and maybe I got caught up in all the hype and all the video and that, I, that I was watching and, uh, and getting excited for this kind of rags to riches story from a horse who came from literally nowhere and is now running in one of the biggest races in the world. But um, it does seem like this is a horse who trains so well, responds well. He seems like a horse with multiple gears when they, you can ask to kind of start to stop, to move into a different spot, to sit, then to move again. So I'm going to put him on top. I just think he's a horse who's kind of versatile, adaptable, and he could get a really nice trip in here. Gino's going 6, 7, 4, 11. I'm hoping for upside as well with Newgate. He's only been to the post nine times. I think he's racing himself back into shape. He showed he could get the mile and a quarter last time out. And I think there actually might be a hint of value if he goes off around 5 to 1 or 6 to 1, considering that he does have that upside potential. So I'll go 9, 10, 11, 4. Should be a great race. Dubai World Cup, race 9 at Maidan on a super, super Saturday in North America, internationally, all over the place. But post time for the World Cup, 12.35 Eastern. Good luck.